what is sophistication. What is a sophisticated makeup look? Of course, it's all up to interpretation. And makeup is about what makes you feel strong, sophisticated, chic. But in today's video, I wanted to walk you through my makeup look when I want to feel really sophisticated, when I want to feel really chic. I already did like a polished and chic makeup tutorial almost a couple of years ago now, and I kind of just wanted to do an updated version of that video. This to me is a really timeless makeup look though. It's about just soft definition showing some restraint as well. A little bit of restraint I think can go a really long way. No one aspect of the makeup look is too overdone. Altogether, everything looks really gorgeous, skin-like, but there's a softness to it too. It doesn't look like you actually put in much effort. So remember guys, if you find me tolerable, please make sure to subscribe before you go. And I would love for you to also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Okay, so first starting off with skin prep. I'm sure you can probably tell by my my hair but it is very humid where I am and as a whole I'm just feeling very hot right now I don't believe this is like really necessary but I am going to apply the bear with me primer water from NYX I recently bought this and oh my gosh this is gonna feel amazing oh yep apparently you can use it as a primer and as a setting product I'm gonna try not to eat the product right now I'm just going to continue applying this throughout this video, probably just to cool myself down. It does give like a little bit of glow, but I don't know if that's really gonna last on the skin. But like I mentioned, this makeup look isn't really about a ton of glow. It's more about a polished looking skin that still doesn't look like a lot of products. The Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base is just one of my favorite primers out there, period. But I love this one because it makes the makeup really glide on your skin. That's very important in making makeup actually look like skin and blending. I find that I notice when I don't have this primer on. You can have like a pretty bad foundation on and if you use this, it makes like almost every foundation just a little bit better in my opinion. It's a really good investment. This is going to help with the way that the product sits on the skin and applies. So a great all around product for foundation. Now you could go a couple of different ways with this. I think the skin should look intentional, but not overdone. So I think that the perfect way to achieve that is always with a medium coverage foundation. Now I have two of my favorites for a more polished makeup look. I have the Cojino Aqua, which is like my holy grail. Um, I've talked about this so many times, but this is really a gorgeous buildable medium coverage that when you look at it on the skin, it looks like skin, but it photographs well. It lasts really well. I always say this, but this is going to be like my wedding foundation. I'm in the shade 002. I absolutely love it. I recommend it over and over and over, but I don't like the shade range. The shade range is not good. So instead I'm going to go in with my Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation. And what I really like about this is that it gives me a really polished looking skin. It almost gives you like a sort of creamy finish. It's not heavy. It still manages to look like skin when you have it on. So I'm going to just do a couple of pumps on the back of my hand and I am going to use a sponge to apply it. And see I have some on the back of my hand and I'm just going to spread this onto the skin and work it in. Don't be afraid to really press it into the skin so that it becomes one with your skin rather than sitting on top of it. You would think that someone that has been doing this for three years would not forget a mirror but I did. So the foundation dried a little bit on the back of my hand but it's still blending really well because we had that primer, plenty of moisture from this bad boy, so it is applying extremely well. I see this as like the perfect everyday makeup look when you just want to look a little bit more put together. You can see with the makeup that little like freckles will still shine through. For me, like chic and sophisticated makeup is really just about that sort of intentionality. I am applying the Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 01. This is just like my go-to concealer right now. And I really enjoy it because it doesn't look heavy on the skin. It's not going to 
look like you have a lot of concealer under the eyes. When there is too much apparent product under the eyes, I think that that actually kind of gives you the opposite effect of what you would want with a look like this. It's going to kind of draw attention to certain areas. And I think what makes a makeup look really sophisticated is that you're never overwhelmed by one aspect of the look. It's not like the brows are too big or the lips are too loud. It's sort of that everything just is very cohesive and just blending that in with the same sponge. So next, this is going to surprise you guys, but I am going to use just a touch of powder. And when I say a touch of powder, I really mean it. Really show some restraint here because a polished makeup look doesn't need a lot of powder, but adding just a little bit of powder under the eyes, on the chin, kind of like a little bit in the T-zone is going to set everything and just take down any of the excess shine that we have, especially because this concealer is quite dewy, which I love. I love a good dewy concealer, but for this look, we want it a little bit more on the natural side. So I'm using my RCMA no color powder. You guys know that this is really the only powder that I will let touch my skin because it doesn't look dry. And I'm serious, like most powders make my skin look very dry, but this one does not. So I'm going to start on the chin, go onto the nose, a little bit onto the forehead, and then I'm just taking the excess and taking it under the eyes a little bit like right here. I like to kind of do like a triangle of powder kind of on the sides of the nose as well. It really helps to flatten that entire area and it'll kind of give you like a soft brightening effect. It'll help kind of conceal the hollows if you have like a hollow under your eyes like I do. So now that we have a little bit of powder down, we're gonna bring some color back into the face. I'm going to be using my Minty Patch to <laughs> that stick. I'm going to be using my Fenty matchstick in the shade Mocha. I adore this shade. It's kind of like a more neutral bronze shade. It's a really gorgeous bronze shade if you have like a similar skin tone to me because it doesn't look too apparent on the skin. And this look is about adding a little bit of shape and color, but we don't want it to overpower any of the other elements that we have going on. So Fenty matchstick this It Cosmetics brush. It's just incredible. What is it called? It's the Heavenly Luxe Number no. 7 brush, and it is gorgeous for cream products. And it's also good because I can apply cream shadow with the brush at the end and do creams with the other side. So just taking some on the brush and just working in layers to build this up. And I like it because you can kind of stamp it in or you could blend like that. Either way, you're not going to kind of mess with the foundation that you have under it. And what I love about the Fenty Matchstick formula, it's incredibly thin and it also has a very skin-like finish. So it never comes off like a lot of product. And I think some cream products are a victim of that, of looking like cream products sitting on the skin. I mean, you can even see now how it has added shape but the texture of the product doesn't let it become really obnoxious. And by the way, you know, this makeup look really is about what you make it. I think everyone will have a sort of idea of how to do a sophisticated look on them, what makes them feel chic. As always, this is just what makes me feel sophisticated. By the way, I always take a little bit of my bronzer and put it across my nose. It ends up looking like you can kind of see your skin peeking out. It's a really good technique to use if you're worried about the makeup coming off as too apparent. I think of it kind of like fishnets or like a slit in the skirt. Fishnets are super sexy because you're covered, but you know, the implication of skin is still there. I think that's why I really like that sort of bronzer on the nose that you can kind of just see your skin peeking through. Just taking it on to my forehead, a little bit of shape on the perimeter. We don't want to look like too tan in this look. Again, it's just more so about shaping the face. I'll take a little bit down here because I mean, what the heck? So you can see we have some shape, a little bit of color to the skin. Everything looks really put together and intentional. And that is the goal. We really want everything to feel like it's in its right place, but also like not contrived. It's definitely a balancing act with this look, but it's totally worth it in my opinion. Next, we are going to go in with one of my 
absolute favorite cream blushes. I'm sure some of you have heard me talk about it before, but it is the Honest Beauty Peony Pink Blush. Um, I also have Coral Peach. That one's like my actual favorite. The Honest Beauty Cream Blushes, if you have not tried them, come on. But really, they are some of the best that I have ever tried, period, end of story. They give such a stained, blotted look on the cheeks that never looks heavy. The formula is very thin and you can apply it over powder. Like no matter what foundation you apply this over, it blends seamlessly. I do not know how they have done it. Like this formula is truly, truly unique. I would say like this is one of the most foolproof cream blushes I've ever used. And I'm just taking it and blending it into the bronzer as well. Because now in this area, it's just like a meshing of color. Everything looks a little bit more natural. And I feel like this is a really flattering color too because it's not too loud. It just gives you that sort of soft pink look. It needs absolutely no blending. It is such an effortless product. And there we go. So the blush is all on. Before we go into the eyes, I'm going to go into the brows. So this is the Hourglass Arch Brow Sculptor. It's like my eyebrow pencil of choice right now. And I really love it because it gives the brows a really soft look. I have really been liking a soft eyebrow, especially because I already have dark eyebrows and they're, you know, they don't have a lot of sparse areas. So what I do is I just fill in any of the areas I want to look a little bit more full. Usually I just kind of drag it under here. This is where I have the most sparse areas. And then extend it out a little bit. It ends up looking kind of like a brow powder, which I think is a very pretty look. Brow powders give such a softness it fills in what you need, but it just doesn't look too graphic. That's really like all the pigment I want in that brow because I don't want this to look too much. Like I don't want it to be too, too much. But I mean, if we're being real, my eyebrows tend to take over some of my looks, but I wanted to do these first so that I could kind of gauge with the eyes how much eye makeup we wanted to put on because the eyes and the brows should sort of like balance each other out. I also find it really helpful if you angle your head back, you can kind of see better where your sparser areas are rather than just looking straight on because I find that mine are kind of under here. This is certainly like my more favorite eyebrow. And this other one can eat shit. Okay, so brows are done. I'm gonna wait to set them. I always like to wait till the end to set up my eyebrows, but we're gonna go for not a super feathery look because we want the brows to be slightly more polished, but we will add like just a touch of texture. Next, we are ready for the eyes, which guys, the eyes are going to be super simple. I think you want to work with your eye shape to kind of elongate the eyes and give it some definition without it looking like a lot of eye makeup. You don't want the eyes to be too overdone because then you kind of get into the I'm trying a lot territory. I think being polished is saying like, hey, I'm here, um, take me seriously, but it's also not saying that you actually take yourself too seriously. So I'm going in with the Revlon Colorstay shadow in a 720 chocolate. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking it into the crease. Just a little bit out here to begin to shape the eye. Just a touch. I'm kind of just adding a shadow there. I don't want it to look like a lot of color. I want it to truly just look like a shadow or, you know, like my eye socket. But to add a little bit of warmth to that area, I'm next going to go in with this other shadow from Revlon. Uh, maybe I'm not gonna do that because I feel like that's not the warmth that I wanted. Okay, going in with the Glossier Skywash in the shade Terra. And Terra is going to give us the warmth I'm looking for, but I don't want too much of this. So I'm putting it on the back of my hand, taking it with the same brush, kind of putting the excess out on the back of my hand and then going in. You can see though, see how it's just a little bit warmer now? It's, you really want it to be subtle. Stamping a little bit on the outer corner of the eye. 
And both of these shadows are pretty crease resistant, which I think is really important with a more like polished makeup look that everything looks really blended and creamy as long as you have it on. And what I think is like one of the prettiest things to do with this makeup look is go for like a very soft, flushed out definition. What I like to do with that is apply a little bit of liner to the outer corners and then just blend it up into the crease and everything that we have going there. It looks really effortless, but it defines the eye. And that definition is what I think makes you look polished like you tried, but you're not really trying too hard. Apply a little bit on the outer corner. Do the same thing over here. Does not have to be perfect. You guys can see that, I'm sure, because we are just going to blend it all out anyway. In fact, I'm going to use the other end of the brush we already used. And you can see I'm just blending this out into the crease. So now the eye has some structure and like a very soft winged outlook, but it doesn't, it's not even like a true soft wing, if that makes sense. You're blending it out so that it just looks like your eye shape is more elongated. It ends up just coming off in general as just a soft definition. I'm gonna add a little bit more over here. And the very last time that I do this and build this up, I'm going to add the most kind of concentrated in the outer corner close to the waterline because that'll add even more definition to that area. This is very, very easy, but it's like a very universally flattering eye look that makes you look put together and polished, but just not overdone. It really just looks like you after like a fulfilling weekend of doing your taxes and organizing your spice cabinet. So now I'm going to go ahead and curl my lashes. I'm using my Kevin Aquan eyelash curler. This is the go-to. It really curls them and lifts them, which is really nice for a look like this. We want the lashes to not be super heavy. This is where I think people go wrong with a more polished, chic makeup look, is that when you apply a mascara that's too heavy, I really think it can kind of weigh down the eyes. I think it just distracts from the subtlety of your makeup look. Like everything looks really soft, it looks really blended. Imagine just having like a ton of volume on the lashes. I think for another kind of look that would be gorgeous and I would love it. But with this one, we really want them to be soft and fluttery. We Again, not a lot of apparent product sitting on the lashes. So I'm going in with my Lash Blast. I adore this one. I know a lot of you already know that, but I love this because it's soft separating volume. It looks like your lashes are naturally that long. It's one of those makeup products. Someone is going to say, I love your lashes, not what mascara are you wearing? But if someone did ask me, I would be one of those people that would be like, oh my gosh, you need to try this. I can't even tell you how many people I've recommended this mascara to. So see, our eyes look soft, they look fluttery, but it's all defined. Everything feels really intentional. And we have shown some restraint, like we could have added a ton of highlight right now, a ton of mascara to the bottom lashes, which we will leave alone because I think that we have enough definition going on. But let's go back into the brows really quickly. So I'm going to use my Glossier Boy Brow in clear. And typically I would kind of push up my brows in the front and make them look super feathery. But for this look, I'm going to push them back and make everything look a little bit more polished. Ever since I became a Glossier rep, which was like quite a while ago now, the Glossier Clear was always a product I would go back to because I feel like Glossier understood what people wanted out of their brow looks before they even really realized what they wanted. Like no one really wants a super, super crunchy brow. They just want everything sort of put together and somehow like look feathery. So brows are in place, eyes are done. We're almost in the home stretch. So speaking of highlight, I waited until the end to do highlight just to see if I really wanted it. And right now, I think that that is enough glow because we used a lot of the primer. I think that really helped to make our skin look fresh. Like when I turn, I'm still catching light. If I were to put one on, it would be the Hollywood Flawless Filter. 
from Charlotte Tilbury because that truly is a lit from within sort of glow that it gives but I just don't think that we need any. So we're going to skip that. Going in very quickly with a lip liner, I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk because this is just the go-to. I feel like every video I'm like, oh, I need to sharpen this and then I never do and now we're here again. So I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna sharpen this. In the process of doing that, I realized that my sharpener broke loose in my drawer and there are shavings everywhere. Now luckily there aren't a lot of shavings because I procrastinate doing this. So again, we're not over drawing the lips, just going with our natural lip line. And I think it's best to go with a lip color or a lip liner that is as close to your natural lips as possible. You could just fill in the lips, apply a little bit of lip balm, and then be done. And I love that, but I do want to try just tapping a little bit of a color on top of this to kind of pull everything together because truthfully, I've been really excited to try this. It is the Nude Sticks Magnetic Lip Plush Paints. And this is the shade Hot Paprika. And I just feel like with my skin tone, this is going to work really well. So they come in these little tubes with the doe foot applicator. And this formula is very plush. It has a slip to it. It's definitely like a liquefied lipstick texture, but it really blots out and blends on the lips so beautifully. So I'm just taking a little bit in the middle of my lips. And then, as I talk weird, I'm just gonna kind of spread it around with a finger. Give the lips like a really soft, diffused look. I love that. And I knew I'd really like that. A blotted lip is really pretty because it's more put together. It has like a little bit more structure, but it also has that softness because it isn't so graphic. And I would say let's set the face, but I'm just gonna set all around because I am just, and this, my friends, is the completed look. It's put together, it's sophisticated, but I also love that this is a really timeless makeup look. This sort of look is never going to go out of style. No matter what you do, you could change the colors up a little bit, but there's always just going to be a softness to this look that I really enjoy. I hope you guys did too, so if you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up before you go if you found it valuable, and I would also love for you to subscribe if you enjoyed it. And with all that, I will hopefully see you in my next one.